Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Hawk Measurement webinar. My name is Ellen Nichols, and I am Marketing Manager here at Hawk. I first just want to say thank you all for being here today, especially in the light of everything that's going on. We know your time is very valuable, so thank you. Today, we'll be talking about all the benefits of remote monitoring and walk you through how it all works. Towards the end of this webinar, we will let you know how to receive a free data plan for an entire year, so please stick around. Our expert speaker today is Dave Grumney. Dave is VP of Sales here at Hawk and has more than 40 years of industry experience. Prior to joining Hawk, Dave owned a flow, level, and monitoring instrumentation company called Flowcorp. At the end of our webinar today, we will have a Q&A session and we'll answer all of your questions at that time. And with that, I'm going to turn the presentation over to Dave Grumney. Hello, Dave. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, can hear you now. Thank you. Okay, great. Sorry. I uh, um, showed I wasn't muted, <clears throat> but one of the things we have all learned over the last couple of months is, is uh, this technology is not flawless, but hopefully the remote monitoring webinar uh, will, will identify some products that, that have been proven to be flawless, which is uh, the Hawk Measurement Remote Monitoring uh, Systems. Again, I just want to thank all of you for uh, for being here, and uh, also want to mention that uh, if you have any questions, um, feel free. Again, even towards the end, if you want to text those in, or or even if you can figure out how to unmute yourself, you can obviously join in and uh, into the conversation verbally as well. But um, uh, one of the questions you may have up front is why is remote monitoring um, so important and, and really kind of what it is? Um, you know, a detailed survey was conducted in March, just, just this past month, to identify the usage trends of temperature, level, pressure, flow, you know, field devices. On, on how monitoring and communication was and is being utilized in process automation. 72% of the respondents said that they connect their transmitters via heart devices. Less than 1% than of the field devices are connected through Ethernet. And although 50% of the field instruments they claim are, uh, are Ethernet enabled, 32% uh, expect to purchase wireless field instruments in the next 12 to 18 months, according to this survey. Uh, all of these numbers are going to double over the next year. Why? Well, since mid-March, everything changed. Remote monitoring is currently and will be, for the foreseeable future, the hottest growth market within the instrument market with a, with a uh, uh, a CAGR, a, a capitalized annual growth rate of over 40% in 2019 and over 45% expected to be in 2020. So in this session, we're going to have a conversation about monitoring those field devices in process applications, what to consider when designing a wireless remote monitoring system, what to consider when designing an implant network with a remote cloud-based web portal, what considerations should be made for the, for the field instruments in these designs. So we're gonna take a look at that in a little more detail uh, in, and uh, also take a look at, at, uh, at, at the different products that we offer, the different solutions that we offer here uh, at Hawk. So Hawk, um, Manufacturers uh, is actually one of the only manufacturers or providers of the field instrument, the field device, as well as the remote monitoring solution, which is pretty incredible if you, if you think about it. So we're going to take a look at just this monitoring section during the next 20 minutes. The Connects 3D is, is a wired or a wireless monitor. 
it's what we call the, the flexible monitor or the flexible process monitor. And I think you're going to see why this powerful platform is called flexible by the time we're finished today. The Connects 3D monitor is internally connected via RS-485 Ethernet using a Modbus communications protocol or software. Each module that, that makes up the Connects 3D monitor can be ordered with a system complete at the beginning or even added to later, providing a, a system that can grow with your needs. Why is that important? Well, imagine if you had a Connects 3D system installed last year. Uh, with a local indication for your plant personnel to be able to see what was happening within a first per, uh, specific process or, or production area. All of this prior to the COVID. And, and now we're in a situation where you need to see the data remotely since you have far less plant personnel. Well, with the Connects 3D, you'd now just simply add a module uh, that would either connect the, a CAT5 or CAT6 cable, so you could see all your monitor data within your implant network, or you'd add a module uh, that would allow you to, through a wireless uplink in that module, the data would be, would be stored and then uplinked to the cloud-based web portal for remote monitoring. It's very powerful, and that's why we say that the power is in this platform. The modular DIN design provides for standard inputs from field devices or heart communications or TCP/IP. Uh, yeah. Uh, we can't see anything on your screen. You can't. It's oh. just it, it's just a blank screen. I wasn't sure if you had pictures up or not. Uh, we do. Thank you for for mentioning that. Yes. Um, this is Glenn Grisham. I can see. You can't I can, see yeah, it. I can, I can, I can see it. Uh, maybe okay. your uh, turn your video on. But I can see it, huh? You can. can okay. See. Well, I'm going to go on and um, yeah, I, I wish I could help you with uh, with being able to see the screen on your monitor. So uh, we were just talking about these this DIN design that provides these, um, uh, these different inputs from all your different field devices. Again, this is field device agnostic. So we could bring any of these analog or heart or TCP or RS-45 communications uh, into, the, um, uh, into the monitor, pulse inputs. E either a single input can be brought in to the monitor or, or you can have multiple inputs from a whole processing area. The Connects 3D can be equipped with a, with a local display. Uh, uh, it could be equipped with either a bright LED digital display or an LCD or a flat panel display all for, for local viewing uh, or no display. Uh, the system will work with without a, a local display. So the Connects 3D provides input from, from any field device and can be communicated uh, remotely, uh, whether wired or, or wirelessly. Uh, our single CPU module communicates with this re uh, relay modules, TCP IP modules, cellular uplink or radio modules or pump controllers like this shown on the screen uh, or, or batch controller. It's, um, the power is in this, this platform. The Connects 3D wireless module is a completely integrated data logger and a cellular radio modem all in one. The module can monitor multiple field devices via RS-485 uh, within a single data plan. And it reduces the cost of the data plan because now we can bring in multiple field devices with one data plan uplink. Uh, there's no more of one-to-one -one, like is what traditionally is offered uh, and currently offered into the market. Um, this, uh, the monitor can, uh, data uplink can be uplinked to our cloud-based server for monitoring or retrieved onto your laptop via a local USB port that you can connect right into this hardware. 
and download the data from the data logger. It's extremely flexible. There isn't another field device uh, that you can connect to a module like this, have access directly to the field device through the module, either through a, a local PC or through the uh, uh, through remote wireless uplink. So it's extremely flexible. And then you have the Connects 3D web portal. The, the web portal um, will, will take all the log data up to the cloud and uh, uh, will log all your, your, your data and you'll be able to see it all on, all on a dashboard. And the, you'll also be able to see once we log in, we'll actually log into the web portal so you can actually take a look at it. And you'll see that the power and simplicity of the operation for your plant level people, as well as your executive executive level personnel that are gonna be interfacing with the, the web portal with the data. So when you're monitoring a, a vast network of operating sites, or if you're monitoring field devices within an operating site, or if you just wanna monitor an individual field device condition, it's important to be able to view as much information as quickly as possible with as much ease as possible to determine the condition of the asset, the inventory levels, the pH readings, the, the pressure or the temperature of a vessel, uh, the safety level of the environment, the, the efficiency of the process, or even the efficiency of the whole plant operation and so on. The Connects 3D provides this rapid response to your data management and your monitoring plan. These photos are, are going to demonstrate just the, the flexibility and expandability of the Connects 3D system. The modules shown here are in the Connects enclosure, but the modules can be mounted anywhere outside of the Connects enclosures. They're, they're DIN rail mounted modules. So they can be mounted in your existing panels. They can be mounted in other enclosures. They're all DIN mounted, so they're, they're easy to integrate and they require no programming. This diagram is going to give you an, a, an example, uh, show these field devices. And in this case, it's this tank farm that is going to be connected by a PoE switch. In this case, the, the field device uh, from Hawk is connecting via PoE Ethernet directly to the switch connected via the TCP IP to a router. And that's going to send the data over the area-wide plant network to offices uh, within the plant site for monitoring, as, as well as to the PLC or DCS system. We've often had customers uh, ask us over the years, you know, I, I have the, um, uh, the level sensor on my tank farm and I have it connected uh, so I could see the data in my office, which is awesome. It's just what we want but we also now have to connect that level from the tank into a PLC or DCS system, and I don't wanna to have to buy another level device to do that. Can we do that through the system that we already purchased through you? And the answer is yes. We could take the data and go directly to a PLC or DCS. We can connect it to your area-wide server, your network server, so you could also see the same data in your office. And now we can actually, through, through a router and, and the firewall in your, in your network, uplink the data to a cloud-based uh, monitoring uh, server. And that cloud-based monitoring server has an internal firewall. It's encrypted data, so it's completely secure. It'll allow you to see the data or headquarters at the executive level to see the data. Uh, and, and, and monitor the data without, um, uh, without any worry or, or conflict of, of having to worry about the, uh, the, the data being hacked. Uh, so we have a very secure remote cloud-based system with data encryption that's being uplinked to the cloud. Our hardware, our platform, um, is extremely secure. In fact, you can't dial into the platform. There is no phone number on the cellular module. And so there, it's extremely 
uh, it's a sec uh, extremely secure system uh, both ways, from the field instruments to the uh, uh, all the way up to the cloud. Regarding the field instruments, um, we can remotely commission uh, the field instruments to uh, to set these these instruments up all while social distancing. We can do it from anywhere in the world. We can even log in through remote um, and, and perform remote diagnostics, take any corrective action that would be needed in order to uh, 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 to, to see amplitudes of a of a level device or uh, to check out a, uh, a particular field device's signal response. We can archive those changes that we've made and, uh, and even provide uh, historical service records. So, and this is one of the reasons why it's so powerful um, that the package that, that Hawk Measurements has put together, again, being one of the only manufacturers that actually makes the field device as well as the remote monitoring solution. Here is an example of a, of a field device that I'm talking about that is PoE. Now this happens to be a guided wave radar, uh, but we could provide power over ethernet into any of our field devices like ultrasonic level, um, guided wave radar level. Any of these devices, they have, we have a simple cost-effective solution to, uh, uh, to give you a device that is TCP IP enabled, and also equipped with its own Ethernet IP address. That Ethernet IP address is what allows us to communicate to the device with our remote monitoring software, uplink the data totally secure, and uh, give multi-parameter monitoring. What I mean by that is uh, a field device that's, oper that, that's communicating through digital communication should be able to give you, um, let's use this example of a level device, should be able to give you not only what the level is in the tank, it should also be able to tell you what the airspace is left in the tank. It should also be able to tell you what the temperature is uh, in the tank because it's another measured parameter. So we can get all of these measured parameters out through, um, through our digital communication. It's also what allows us to remotely diagnose uh, this, the health condition of the field instrument as well. This is a, an example of the simple wiring uh, that's going to be required if it isn't already. Um, going to be required because, um, uh, quite honestly, we don't know when when uh, the next pandemic is going to come around the corner, which means we don't know when we can get electrical field personnel in to, to run conduit and to pull wires and to do all the things that traditionally had to be done to field devices. Now it's a matter of just simply and easily connecting a CAT5 or a CAT6 cable directly to a transmitter and through the power over Ethernet um, uh, wiring scheme that you see here. It's powered and it's digital communication is all in one. Any of these devices, as I said, can be connected through this simple means of, of com digital communications. More and more instrumentation is coming out with uh, power over ethernet communications. And, and it's something, if you haven't seen it yet, you will see it a lot over this next year. Any of these devices, I said, you can monitor remotely from any device that has a, a web browser. You can simply log on to the online portal and uh, within a glance, you'll be able to see uh, uh, any, uh, any and all of, of these parameters. So um, as, a, as a matter of fact, it's, this is a, a good reminder, you'll see this, um, uh, you, you'll see this little uh, advertisement, the shameless, shameful plug up here that says free data plan for one year. Because of this COVID virus pandemic, we at Hawk have been trying to think, what can we do to help industry? What can we do to help uh, our customers uh, through this global pandemic? 
And the one thing we can do, and the one thing we promise each of you and everyone that we will provide a full free one year data plan. Uh, so you can start monitoring remotely and uh, eliminate the worries of uh, not enough plant personnel or um, the worries of my process efficiencies through this local pandemic. So uh, what I'm gonna do now is come over here to this tab, open this thing up so you can actually see, I've just logged into our, to our web portal, the Connect 3D web portal. And uh, on, one, on this one simple dashboard, I can see obviously the map of the United States. Now, we can embed any map in here, but I just chose the, the map of the United States. And uh, the reason why we have the map of the United States here is we have in this, in this example that we're gonna use, we have remote sites. Uh, it could be plant sites throughout the country. And I wanna see at a glance, uh, any one of those uh, areas or plant sites, and I want to select it down by state. Now, we'll take a look at the state of Ohio, since this is actually the state I'm in right now, uh, but I could pick any one of the states. Uh, I have a couple of demo tanks set up here. The demo tanks, uh, just by clicking on them, will give me uh, a, a whole set of, of high-level information, like what the current inventory is in that tank what that tank level height is and what the capacity of the tank is. Uh, I, I know this tank is, uh, you know, I, I can remember it in my, uh, in my memory, but I don't know exactly how, how tall the tank is. Oh yeah, this is a 12 inch tall tank. That's really small. And by the way, we can measure a tank through our level sensing technology that's only 12 inches which is really important in a lot of processes. We can measure very small tanks. We can measure tanks that are, of course, 100 feet high as well. But in this case, we're measuring a, a little tiny reactor. And um, so in, we could actually see uh, the condition of each one of these applications just by clicking on it. We could scroll down, take a look at the demo uh, tank, and we could see the historical trending of that tank. We could scroll out and see over a long period of time what the level trending was in that little tank. And we can also scroll back in and we can get very granular with this data, nearly real time with this data. We know currently we're 32% full, how many gallons and how many tons we have. It makes the, the, the volume and the mass conversions. And of course we could see where this is located. Just by clicking on the green button, we can actually see some more tank details. Uh, in this case, we, uh, we know that when we set this up, maybe we didn't know if during normal use this tank filled or empty, but it, it actually filled. Um, it, it actually fills and then we slowly empty it, which we could see by the historical trend. We can actually put alarm set points in it as well. So um, I'm gonna put a alarm of one half in here. And um, and now we know uh, it's it's already been entered, and now I'll get uh, an SMS text alert, or uh, and an email alert anytime I get down below one half. So I can easily see, easily operate, and easily make changes or additions to any one of my sites, whether it's a tank or a flow meter or a pressure transmitter, temperature transmitter, I can add or change or uh, any new organizations. So if I were um, a manufacturer of bulk oil and I have uh, 22 customers out in a certain region or state and I want to uh, remotely monitor those customers so I can uh, dispatch uh, filling of their remote tanks automatically based on what my web portal is telling me, we can do that. We can add new organizations and customers. We can manage existing organizations. We can add locations uh, and also manage those locations. We could set up these users so they can get web, um, uh, not only web-enabled data if we choose to have them uh, see this web-enabled data, but also if we want them to receive email notifications and SMS, 
uh, text alerts. So this is the very simple uh, usage of the web portal. Like I say we can click on any number of these of these states or sites. We could see any number of tanks or material in the tank. What the um, what the current inventory condition is of that tank uh, at any time. Um, what happens with your free one-year subscription that you receive is uh, you'll be able to receive specific login credentials um, that will allow you to see your specific tanks and your specific tanks only, and, um, and you will receive this whole package. And again, it's free for, for one year. With that, Ellen, I'm going to turn that back to you. Excellent. I, I appreciate it, Dave. Thank you so much for all that great information. If you haven't already, now is the time to submit your questions in the chat box. Okay, so I'm going to get to our first question here for you, Dave. Um, our first question is, what other countries besides the U.S. will the data plan work in? Uh, yeah, we have our current data plan is, um, you know, because we buy data in a very large pool. And our current data plan within this pool is for the U.S. and Canada. Now, from our um, data provider, we can get international calling plans as well. We just don't have currently any set up. But if, if you're calling, you know, if you if you were uh, wanting to monitor uh, devices in Mexico or South Korea, uh, we can simply arrange for a data plan for that. We'd have to uh, uh, make sure our our modem, our cellular radio modem, is going to be compliant with the network in that given area. Uh, i give you a for instance, our network, our cellular network in the United States and Canada is flipping over to LTE 5G rapidly. Now we're still supporting 3G and 4G, that's the reason why a lot of you could still use your cell phones, but there's this what's called a sunshine law that's going to make that 3G, 4G network expire. Um, they keep moving the date around, but it's going to be sometime in 2021 everything will have to be flipped up to the uh, LTE 5G network. But in Mexico, in a lot of areas in Europe, they're still on 2G, 3G. So um, our, our modem, our hardware, has the capability and the flexibility to adapt to either a 2G, 3G network or now the new LTE uh, 5G network. Excellent. Thank you. That was a popular question. So amongst some um, some attendees. So thank yeah, you. Yeah, it's one I get a lot. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Okay, we have another one here. Um, you mentioned that you can remotely monitor multiple inputs with one data plan. What is the maximum number of tanks or inputs that can be monitored with one data plan? Uh, okay. Well, the the data logger. Um, uh, and modem, which which marshals the the multiple inputs coming in, again is all RS-485 over Modbus. Modbus convention limits the number of addresses, Modbus addresses, on a single communication string, or just basically on two wires um, that are daisy chained to about 140. Uh, and so. The answer to the question, the simple answer to the question would be 140. But that's a lot of data coming in um, to be managed. So practically speaking, we try to keep it right around eight inputs per data plan for right now. But obviously, we can do a whole lot long, uh, a whole lot uh, greater number than, than eight. Um, a lot of it has to do with the amount of data that we're going to be storing and how often we're going to be uplinking the data. Basically, what I'm trying to say is it depends on how long you want the phone call to be. The more data we have to uplink, the longer the time, the transfer time of that data it's going to take to uplink the data. So, um, so practically speaking, eight is the answer. But um, physically speaking, really 140 would be the answer. 
Okay, we have some really good questions coming in. Can Hawk access any of these at any time? Or is this by a password or permission granted by the customer? Also, if you lose connectivity, does all historical data come once connection is restored or is that data lost? So I don't know if you want to break it into mm -hmm. two questions, if you want me to ask Very the first good. one. Very <laughs> good. Yeah. I let me ask the, the answer the first one as far as the data. Um, the, the data that the customer stores up in the cloud is, um, is the customer's data only viewable by the customer. Now, that being said, it also can be accessed through the super administrator here at Hawk. Uh, and the reason why we have to be able to access the data is because and quite honestly, we hardly have ever had to do this. Uh, but if there is an issue where you can't log in, for instance, then you would call in or text in or email in and say, hey, I can't log in or I've lost my password. We have had that. I've, I've had that one just uh, in the last couple of months. I can't, I can't remember my password. Is there a way I can get into the data? that super administrator has to have access to your account to be able to see what your login credentials are in order to get into it. So we but know this, we do not sell the data. We don't monetize the data. It is secured data. It's, it's like I said, it's not even accessed by anybody else but the super administrator here. What was the second question? I mean, the second part of that question, Al? The second part, okay, here we go. Sorry to scroll up. Also, if you lose connectivity, does all historical data come, oh, sorry, people keep typing in. Yeah, um, yeah. Does all historical data come once connection is restored or is that data lost? Yeah, that's such a good question and it's really the reason why we designed the system the way we did because for years we were using third-party systems or traditional cellular remote monitoring systems um, some of the largest companies that made them uh, we were, were actually buying them and selling them and uh, one of the problems with all of those systems that are out in the market is uh, they work great as long as one your field sensor is working great which was always an issue um, uh, that, that they were having or two if you've lost um, connectivity typical reasons for losing t connectivity uh, for those systems were one they lost battery um, their battery drain was faster than what their battery meter said it was ours by the way is actual volts not uh, an anticipated voltage value um, so you could see real-time uh, battery usage uh, but that's that's one of the reasons why you'd lose connectivity or two you'd lose connectivity because Quite honestly, the cell tower went down, or or it just lost connectivity with the cell tower. So, uh, in those cases, you would lose all your data. Not true with the connects. With the connects, we data log all data, even if you lose connectivity with, uh, let's say, a cell tower, or let's say um, the the battery went out on the uh, on the cellular transmission uplink but you still are connected to your field device, which is still taking measurements and still logging data. That data is stored until, um, until the cell tower comes back to health, makes a handshake with the, uh, with the wireless radio modem and uplinks all the stored data at that point. So you never lose data. If you wanted to retrieve your data before this handshake event would happen, you could always go to the field device, connect from your computer into the USB port of the data logger and download the data um, into our uh, Connect 3D data logger software manually. So you can always do manual retrieval of data. The other thing you can do with your PC connected directly to the device is you can actually check the health or diagnose the health of the radio modem yourself. One of the things that drives all remote monitoring crazy is there's no way to interface with them. So if you're not uploading data, you don't know why. You don't know if it's because of a battery issue or if the cell tower is down. There's just no way to tell. Um, but with our device, you can actually come in with your PC, 
uh, up, uh, boot up the software that communicates with the module, the data logger module, and you can actually diagnose the health. You could see if, for, if the antenna is unplugged, it'll tell you the antenna is unplugged. If the cell tower is down, it'll not only tell you a cell tower is down, it'll tell you the name of the cell tower that's not communicating. So you could do a number of things with this. Awesome. Okay, so our next question is, will you offer the Connects 3D in an explosion proof box for Div 1, Div 2 areas? We do offer the, 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 the data modules, all the, the input modules and so on. They, they do come uh, with the option of being equipped in a uh, Adelet explosion proof enclosure or um, you know, a class one, division one enclosure. Uh, the, the system does not have uh, FM or UL uh, class one, div one um, approval, but certainly it would it can come in an approved uh, enclosure. Okay. Our next question is: I assume you are using Modbus over IP. Actually, we use multiple um, uh, communication protocols, so we can select to use uh, um, TCP/IP, Modbus RTU, um, Modbus. Um, uh, T or uh, Modbus TCP, and um, so yes, it is still using the Modbus protocol, but it could be RTU or TCP IP. Okay, and then, okay, the last question is, unless anyone else has any, um, are there any plans to add simple control function to this platform, a simple PLC function in his um, computer cutout? Okay, yeah, we have, um, so, you know, a, a simple PL, uh, PLC type function locally. Uh, we don't have the ability to remotely control it. And the reason for it is, is the data security that I talked about earlier. We can't even dial into the modem. No one would be able to, there isn't, uh, uh, you know, North Korea couldn't dial into our modem either. It just isn't possible to dial into our modem. We disabled that feature and we did it purposely. That being said, that means that you can't remote dial in and turn a pump on and off. But you can do it locally. Um, it can do it automatically locally just by setting up a set point and, um, and, and have that local, uh, if you remember seeing that relay module, um, and just turn a pump on and off or do a batch control or do a triplex pump control or duplex pump control if this is a, a lift station or a pump station. Um, it can do all that control locally, but we don't have the ability to do it remotely because of security. All right, well, that was our last question. So thank you so much, Dave. And um, on behalf of myself and Dave and everyone at Hawk, we really thank you for joining us today. We hope that this content was very valuable for you and your organization. And if you have any questions that come up at a later date, please feel free to contact us. Thank you so much again and have a great day.